Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you're part of my life as well. Well, today, Wednesday uh, at 9.30 a.m., we have our Ladies Deeper Life Group meeting here at the church, and I think they also have a Zoom component. So check that out if you're a lady. They have a great Bible study. Uh, we heard lots of testimonies on Sunday about how great the Ladies Bible Study is. So come on out. They're having a great time together. And in the evening at 7 o'clock, we have our Grace Truth Study, which is exploring uh, how we as a church and, and as Christians can be more involved in welcoming people from the LGBTQ plus community in a way that honors scripture and scripture's teaching on sexuality, but also that honors people as uh, created in God's image. It's a fantastic course. One of the, the reports I'm hearing back, I've been through the course twice, so I know this from personal experience, but I'm hearing reports now from people who have been in the course uh, this uh, this time through, we're saying that they were skeptical and uh, not sure how it was going to turn out, but they're really loving it and thinking that it's uh, extremely biblical, a fantastic time. So come on out for the Grace Truth course, 7 o'clock. If you're not able to make it, we're going to be running it again because we're hoping to bring everybody in the church through this course. Uh, I'm still waiting for the eclipse. For me, it's Monday. Uh, so I've got my eclipse glasses out. You've probably you've already seen the eclipse if you've seen it at all. I can't see you at all right now. <laughs> I've got my eclipse glasses ready to go. For me, it's 2.30 in the afternoon, and uh, I've already been outside and seen a little bit of the sun eclipsed by the moon. It's very cool. So after I watched this, after I recorded this video, I'm going to go back out and look at it again. Um, this is how I roll. On Sunday, I preached on uh, Psalm 8, and one of the most interesting verses in that psalm, I, I don't know if you felt this way, but I certainly felt this way, is uh, is verse 2, actually, of the, of the psalm, where the psalmist says, Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you've established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. Out of the mouths of babies and infants, you've established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. And, and I talked about this, that you know what the psalmist is doing, what David is doing here is he is saying that, look, you've got these enemies, you've got these the foes, the Avengers, not the like Captain America Avengers, but, but those who are, are, are seeking to you know, avenge themselves upon uh, Israel or upon uh, their, their, the, the, those who believe in God. And they're, they're fuming and they're raging and they're making their plans. And what God has ordained to stop them is the babble of babies. It's, it's the, the weakest, uh, meekest, gentlest uh, um, weapon that you can think of. Uh, but that's what, through which God has ordained strength uh, into this world. And I talked about this uh, in pretty good detail on Sunday. And if you haven't seen the sermon on Sunday, do check it out. It's on YouTube and on our Facebook page. But the idea there is that, um, you know, we live in a world today where people value strength and they think strength is what's going to overcome uh, those who are their enemies. And, and that is, like, we see this in lots of different arenas. We see this you know, where, where there's financial strength, right? I'm going to gain financial strength so that I can, I can overcome uh, my enemies, whether my enemies are poverty or, or want or need, uh, whether my enemy is you know, uh, uh, sickness or disease. I'm going to use my wealth to overcome those enemies. Maybe it's maybe it's political power, right? I'm going to gain political power so I can I can own the libs or own the conservatives, right? I'm going to I'm going to, we're going to whack those who are our enemies, right? Our political opponents. And we need more strength in order to fight those bad people who want to do bad things to my country, right? Um, whether it's what's financial strength, whether it's political strength, even physical strength, right? People want to be physically intimidating uh, so that they're not going to be bothered by other people. They want to be physically beautiful. They want to be physically powerful. They want to use uh, everything at their disposal to gain the advantage that they need to succeed in society. And, you know, there's lots of different things we could talk about here, but but this has not been God's approach. It's not God's approach in the Bible, and supremely it is not God's approach in the person of Jesus. And here's what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. He says, 
Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. Pause there for just a second. Paul is talking about um, you know, what the two major people groups in the world at that time uh, for him were, were looking for. Jews were looking for sort of miraculous signs to prove the, the strength and the power of God. And Greeks were looking for, for wisdom, the strength of wisdom, to sort of overcome intellectual arguments. That's what they valued. The Greeks valued wisdom, and the Jews valued sort of supernatural signs. Um, and Paul is saying, these are the things that people want to see. They think that's going to be their salvation. But we, he says, preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. Jesus crucified, for those who believe, is certainly a, a miraculous sign. But for those who don't believe, Jesus crucified is a loss, right? Uh, Jesus crucified is the opposite of a miracle. Nobody delivered Jesus from the cross. Jesus died on the cross. Jews demand signs. Greeks seek wisdom. It, what foolishness it is to believe in a crucified Savior. But that's the message that we preach. We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. This is God's approach to win victory. God's approach to victory is not, I will overcome it with superior strength. No, God's approach is to overcome strength with weakness. God's, God's approach is to overcome the wisdom of the world with what seems foolish to the world. It doesn't take you long watching the news to find somebody out there who is proclaiming that they are the person who is strong enough to bring victory to Christians. Right? Who is it that's on your side? Who is it that's fighting for you? Who is the strong man who's going to bring you the salvation that you desire? Well, that's already done, folks. <laughs> the, the one who brought the salvation that you desire was crucified 2,000 years ago. Um, we don't need a strong man to fight our battles for us. We've already got Jesus. We need a good man. <laughs> We need a weak man. We need, we need good and weak people and meek and humble because in our meekness, in our humility, in our, in our lack of wisdom, as we love one another, as we trust in God and God does amazing things among us, it becomes clear that it's not human strength that's winning the battles that we're winning. It's not human strength that keeps us going. It has to be God, right? Because look, it, it makes a weird sort of sense, right? I mean, if if you're relying on the, the traditional strengths of the world, wisdom, supernatural signs, uh, if, you're, if you're relying on strength, political power, money, those sorts of things, is it any surprise to you when a group that's backed by a billionaire gains traction and media attention in this world? gets success. People come and become part of that group. But when they, we got a billionaire who's funding it and pumping out all the money that they need in order to, to make it publicly, right? Nobody looks at that and says, wow, that's a miracle, right? But when a group that doesn't have two dimes to rub together and is just using everything that they have to serve others, when that group is successful, you look at it and you say, it could only be God, Right? When a group that has like lots of political, powerful people who are fighting on their side, when they get legislation passed and when they succeed in Congress and when they succeed in the Supreme Court or whatever, nobody looks at that and says, wow, that's a miracle, right? No, 
The power of God must be at work there. No, people look at that and they say, well, that was some clever political maneuvering. You got, yeah, you had some definite uh, strength on your side. Of course, you, you were able to do that, right? Nobody says that's a miracle. Nobody says that's the work of God because it's using traditional human uh, abilities to accomplish their task, right? When a beautiful person goes out into the world and, and, pe and people, you know, help them and, and do good and like, kind things for them, nobody says, whoa, what a miracle that this beautiful person has success. But when a person who has nothing to recommend them in terms of looks goes out there and, uh, you know, succeeds by the power of God, people say, wow, that's a miracle, right? If you don't have what the world th says you have to have in order to succeed, and God does powerful things through you, then it's clearly a miracle. And then your boast, as the Apostle Paul says, right? Your boast, you have no boast. You're simply in the presence of God. And God is the one who gets to boast, right? We bring glory to God. Out of the mouths of babies and infants, God has de has uh, determined strength. This is not just a one-off thing in Psalm 8. It's not just a one-off thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. This is the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Paul says, this is what's happening on the cross. God is using the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God is, is choosing a crucified man through whom to bring salvation to the world, to end the, the, the reign of sin and the power of the devil. This is the way of God. And so look for that, right? Do that. That's what we're supposed to be involved in. Not finding our own strength, but trusting God with our weaknesses and seeing God do triumphant things. You wanna win? Jesus says the way to win is to lose, right? Uh, the way to win is not what the world says it is. The way to win is through the power of humility and weakness. That's the way of Christ. That's the way of the cross. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this upside down approach to the world. Lord, it is not what I would have figured out on my own. It's not what I would have thought. It, it is not what everything in the world teaches me to expect. It's the mark of God. It's the mark of the work of God. Lord, I pray that my boast would not be in my strength, in my wisdom, in my supernatural abilities, but that my boast would be in you, that our boast would be in you, that new beginnings that our effectiveness would not come from the things that the world looks at as marks of success, but that, our, that the impact that we would have on this community would be through our weakness, our kindness, our gentleness. That people would look at us and they would say, those are the marks of Jesus. God has to be at work. I pray that for each of our lives as well. Help me to be that, to live that way. In Jesus' name. Lord, I lift up the Ladies Deeper Life group this morning at 930. Please bless them as they dig into your word together. And thank you so much for the Grace Truth chorus tonight. I pray that you'd bless all those who are participating, whether in person or by Zoom. pray that we would learn to love those whom the world despises and love those who even many in the church despise. Um, because you've chosen the, the despised things to shame those who are welcomed. Lord, we love you. We trust you. I ask your blessing on everyone within the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.